Sleep pound greater. What's up? This is the It's About Time podcast, and as you can see, I have my daughter slash co-host with me <laughs> again. Uh, I don't know. This might be a permanent thing. I, I need y'all feedback to let me know. <laughs> let me know what she make a good co-host, or I become the co-host and she become the host. Hey, hey, uh. you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever works. Uh, start off with my Bible verses. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalms 56, third verse. And that's that's true, you know. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in the good Lord. Uh, been afraid a lot. I've, I've been trusting him a lot. So, you know, and, and it works. He, You know, he's there for us. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to him. Um. Uh, Talk about how I've been since the last uh, recording podcast. Uh, I just was telling uh, Claude, I'm, the best two weeks of my life, well, not my life, but the best two weeks since I've been depression was the last two weeks. I don't want to jinx it, knock on wood, oh, but... <laughs> it's all here. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've been feeling pretty good. I started back to the gym. I'm walking more i gotta make myself do these things and uh one thing i know helps i come home from work and i lose my phone yep the cell phone will <laughs> do it for you i lose it i gotta look for it to charge <laughs> it up at night uh but yeah i i have completely not completely but i have distanced myself especially from mm -hmm. you know but facebook market takes me back there every once in a while it gets joseph every time <laughs> Yeah, I just but, bought a book bag from uh, Facebook from, uh, Market. Uh, Facebook Market, yeah, it, it gets you. Time. I can't delete Facebook because <laughs> of Facebook Market. Uh, see a lot of stuff. I'm trying to get me a home gym for the back uh, patio, uh, so I'm looking at weights and weight benches and stuff. And but, that's yeah. filled uh, on Facebook Market. Uh, Nico, what you thought about the verdict? I was very happy, but... I was really surprised. I mean, I hate to say that I thought it was going to go a different way. I felt like he did too, because if you see like the footage, his facial expressions, and he had like um, something tight, like written on his hand. That too. was uh, his lawyer numbers. Oh, his lawyer numbers. Yeah, okay. that's what it was. Yeah. Um, I didn't really look too much into it, but yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, it was like a breath of fresh air. But then at the same time, it's like. I want more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I want yeah, more. But we need more as a, as the black community is trying to and strive for more of what we need, what we want. You know, uh, what I thought about it, I was relieved, but I also thought back, I put myself in the jury yeah. mindset. Mm -hmm. uh I know in the back of their mind, they say, if we come back and find this man not guilty, these people are going to burn the United States I down. I mean, <laughs> you know? they were waiting for it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But I, I was like, wow. You I know, I was, I don't I always said they were going to find him guilty, but I didn't know they were going to find him guilty of all three charges. Mm -hmm. That that was mm -hmm. surprising. Yeah. But uh, it's, a, it's a start. We have a long way to go with s systemic racism. Mm -hmm with uh we have a long way to go with the police department because that's the to me like somebody said you could have a hundred cops one bad cop but the other 99 don't turn that bad cop in then you got a hundred and one mm -hmm. bad cops so mm -hmm. it's it is you know it's, 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 
it's a step toward progress, you know. I um, I I think it was on Twitter. I can't remember exactly where I read it at, but basically they were saying how they would like the police for like the police force to be reformed, right? Yeah. And and also like if you don't, because I know they're like trained to kill, right? But if you took that away from them, she put some like she phrased it like, "Would you think actually sign up to be a police if you take away the fact that you are trained to shoot to kill?" Yeah, you got a point. Yeah, you got a point there. Yeah, but the, the, I think the retraining. I, I think if if you call nine one one and you know the person you calling on have a mental illness, mm-hmm. I think the police should respond because they they not they're not trained. They're, they're not, not trained, trained to deal with Mm-mm. mental illness. A police should come. But they should also have some kind of advocate right. that comes with mm-hmm. the police. I agree. So they could, you know, try to talk this person down or whatever the case might mm-hmm. be. Then if it go wrong, then the police there to yeah to to back up that person. Mm-hmm. But police, police, and I'm not here. I guess I'm playing devil's advocate. The police have so much responsibilities. That they're not trained to deal with. That's know? true. Yeah. You know, but. Mm-hmm. But I'm at not... the end of the day, t- I mean, like it's a double-edged sword. Like it's not. It's a gray area. It's not black yeah. and white, which people want it to be. It's not. And you know, police are human too. But at the same time, it's like yeah. you made that choice to yeah. put yourself not in a higher like power, but like just in a higher pedestal. Like you took that oath to, yeah. you know. You know, but people also realize, I'm not going back a long way ago, the police was, the police department was formed back when slavery ended to... Yeah, to, to wash the, them, yeah, to wash the, them, to be, yeah, they were a patrol group. Yeah, patrol group. Yes, the, 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 volunteers. When, a, when, a, when a blacks do something wrong, put them back in jail, and once you put that black person back in jail, he went back to slavery. Yeah, so, or kill them. I'll kill them. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that's 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 a little a little gray area. But you know. Yeah, but if something's good. built off of racism. You can't tell me that there's no racism in there today. Oh but, it's, you know. it's, yeah, that's the biggest racist group I think. You know. Mm-hmm. Beside the Republicans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> going <laughs> left field. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there because the door was open. I tell you, we had a uh, conversation mm-hmm. that we forgot the meditation. Oh, <laughs> but you, you got okay, it. That's all right. Yeah. That's okay. Um, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it was very interesting and surprising to me because I didn't have no idea, and your mama didn't have no idea. But I'm quite sure a lot of parents out there does that. But mm-hmm. they don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. Ex- start off, yeah. explain to us what that conversation sure, was sure. all about. So first, let me start off by saying that the reason I had this revelation, I guess, yeah. is because I have been on some sort of what people would call a spiritual journey, spiritual awakening. But basically, all it, it, that means is like you're f- realizing who you actually are as a person. You know, like we're born. And we are automatically programmed by society rules and by our generation, like Mm -hmm. our family and stuff like that. So a lot of it can hold down on us that we don't even know. It's like just like like just actions and words and stuff that we are exposed to can affect us in any in any type of way, you know. So and it's mostly with like if you're trying to figure out like what's holding you back like what's making you angry what's making you sad or anything of that sort um and you're trying to just be it's called like be one with your higher self Mm. right that's what you call it you got to get rid of those things that are holding you back limiting beliefs and i noticed that one from mine was coming how i was too scared to disappoint people Mm-hmm. Like that was my thing. Like I did not want to disappoint anybody. I wanted to help. I don't want to disappoint. I had to do the best at it. Perfectionist. And uh, not to cut you off. Oh, yeah. Question: Do you think that came from us as parents, or that was something that? I think it started, yeah, from parents because look at you and mother, right? You both came from. 
literally the definition of poverty. True. Right? True. Both of you guys. Um, and so when you had kids, I'm sure in your mind, you decided they're going to do better than what I had. True. Right? So when that is a goal for you, sometimes it could be like push, 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 push. Right? Mm. And I, I think I remember, I, <laughs> I think it was an elementary school or something. I came home with a C and mommy's like, what? Like, what is this C, right? And, you know, from there, I was like, I don't want to disappoint them. They, I, they're looking, they're expecting me to do really well. Like, I don't want to, like, like I said, disappoint you guys. Yeah, but that's so much pressure you're putting on a 9, 10-year-old. That, yeah, because person. you want yeah, that, you know, yeah. this is where you start. Education is important. You know, that's like drilled into your head so many times. Education is important. Education is important. And then at the age of seven, you know, I became a older sister with just being by I was by myself literally yeah. for seven years of my life right spoil yeah I mean still is there's a difference between spoiled <laughs> and spoiled brat okay um that's your sister <laughs> wow yes um no just kidding she's great mm-hmm. but well when you know when she was born it was like okay well you have to do good now because you have this little person looking up to you now right and I didn't resent any you know anybody yeah. but it just growing up with that it was like i have to do good i can't mess up i can't like yeah like mess up in any type of way because i didn't want that to just go on to my sister and then she messes up and i don't want to disappoint you guys so yeah. it's like i was put into that role model position by us or by the assumption that you didn't want to let us down and your sister i i mean both of that. Like, I don't want to let you guys down. I don't want to let Lenana down. But that also comes from you guys were like, you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to do this. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I got to do it. And I cannot not do it because then I will let you down. Wow. And I don't think a lot of parents realize how much your guys' word, your guys' actions really do affect your children. And it's not saying, because you guys are amazing parents, mm. and I'm not saying that parents are bad, no. But no. when parents have issues or any type of like, I hate to call it issues, but you know, anything that's holding them back from something or just like fears that they have, mm-hmm. right? Like that can go on to your child, but in a completely different way. Like, you yeah, know, when- uh, yeah, yeah, you know, as parents, we don't. Because the way I was raised, if if grown people in a room, we, we wasn't in that room. Right. You know. Right. But today's society, you got kids around, so they hear a lot of conversation that they really don't need to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do remember sitting you down, I think you was about 10, and we had a little bench on the little front porch, and I was sitting you down, and I, I was telling you that um, this is my first time being a parent. This is your first time being a child. We're going to make mistakes. What we have to do is learn from our mistakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm the first to admit, yeah, I made mistakes as a parent, you know. Um, and y'all made mistakes as a child, but it wasn't mistakes, bad mistakes mm-hmm. like. They're learning lessons. Yeah, learning <laughs> lessons, yeah. You know, everybody's going to skip school. Your mama said, no, they're kind of shit. Everybody skips school. I don't give a, you know, you could be the biggest nerd out there. You go, man, I ain't going to school today. I'm yeah, going I mean... around the corner and smoke me a joint. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But um, all in all, we're good kids. But I didn't know that pressure was put onto you until you said something a couple of weeks ago. And I'm thinking about it. I said, damn. You know, that wasn't meant to be. I just thought that was yeah. a natural mm-hmm. progression with life, mm-hmm. you know, that you take that. So I know how these athletes feel when they say, I'm not a role model. And and, and I kind of feel that because they they did good for themselves, but that don't mean they have to be your child role model. Right. You know, the, the, the parents, you know, if, the parents in that child life, right. if, if you know, they, 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 they should be that person. But I always wanted for my child to be a lot better than me and their mother, you know. Right. And that, and, yeah. and so when you have that, so you're just, I think of like a horse, right? When they have like the things when they're riding on their eyes. 
So yeah. they look that way, so they get confused. So when you have like a goal and you're like, I do not want my child to be like that, that's all you're going to see, right? And yeah. then sometimes we don't see, like, you can't control other how people react to things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why true. communication yeah. is really important, you know, real yeah. good communication. But um, so that's why it's like, it's not your fault that I, but I felt that way because of things that were presented. Uh, I, mean, I mean, there's no manual to being a parent. Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. It's, uh, it, it's not as no man you being a child, you know. But I just think as a parent, we do put added pressure onto our kids to do good, uh, because most parent, most caring parents want their kids to be successful, whatever that success is. Uh, and I, I, you know, I I look at you know me and your mama talk last night. You know, you said. Your mama said, we should pat ourselves on the back. I said, I'm not because because my kid, you and Leilana, y'all still growing. Y'all still. Yeah, but you always got to think. In mommy's sense, I would be like, yeah, because you have to be, okay, well, I'm doing this. Because even though it's, you always have to be grateful for the now. And you did that. You raised two people from birth to in their 20s. Yeah, you know, so uh-huh. that's something to be proud of. You know, that's something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud, but I'm, I'm, I'm also still not finished. Well, we're with, never with, finished with, until with, 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 to our last day on Earth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna be here for a long time. So y'all, y'all got me for a while. You know, I, I mean, I, I'll be here. That's fine. Oh, you know, about 110. <laughs> but, I would, I would yeah. want that. Yeah, I'll be living with you. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean that was an interesting conversation we had, and mm-hmm. and it it opened my eyes up to what we expect our kids to do, you know, without telling them what to do. You know, we expect our kids to right. be these set of morals that they're mm-hmm. supposed to grow up with. But you know, but I I noticed. I noticed the difference between you and Le- I knew Leilana in the third grade. As soon as she finished high school, go to college, she was gone. Yes. <laughs> I got off the bat, you know, when uh, they saying well, the uh, the daycare wasn't picking her up from the school no more. She said, "That's right, I walk on." You were totally different. I would cry. I like, know yes, that parents? you were totally different. <laughs> you were, you know. I remember the school calling me and saying, hey, we're going to, uh, to call the police if you don't pick up your kid because I'm on sleep. I was working nights at the time. But, uh, yeah, there, I mean, it was a good conversation. I enjoyed it. Uh, but it's also awareness it's aware- to what you we ask our kids to do, yeah. uh, and per I, se. I think um, some people forget that, you know, that is your child. But that's a whole human being. Like this, like we're here, you're, I think we're all here on earth in this life for Mm -hmm. a reason. Like we have our reasons why we're here, right? And although I am your daughter, that does not mean I have to be you. True. Right? And I think a lot of parents kind of forget that and they're like, no, you have to live like my rules or do this and do that. And it's like, no, there's other ways to be successful. You know, there's other ways to live life. It doesn't have to be just the way you We want it to be as a parent. Yeah, Yeah. that's true. But you got to be open to that. Right. The parent has to be open to your kids' needs, not needs, but your kids' wants for for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, for 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 whatever they want out of yeah. life, and you got to stand behind them, mm-hmm. even whatever the case might be. Let me ask you about your meditation. What what what? Uh, how have that helped you with your day to day? Yeah, activity? with my life. Yeah, so life. I am a huge advocate of meditation. I think we should all meditate. It literally takes five minutes. You can do ten minutes. I do like 30 minutes sometimes. Wow. Yeah. But we live in such a fast-paced environment. We're always on the go from when we wake up to mm-hmm. when we go to bed. Always on the go. This is why, you know, before you go to bed, it's always the hardest time to go to bed because your mind's just racing. Because yeah. this is the, 
the only chance that you probably stood there and listened to your brain go, mm-hmm. right? Because we're so busy, we're looking at our phones, so we're always consuming content, we're always consuming something. Whether you're in school, you're consuming knowledge. You're at work, you're consuming so, the things, yeah. you know? And then we get home and then we watch TV and we binge on Netflix or we're on our phones. Like a, The phone addiction in America yeah. is high, high, and I'm talking high. high. Um, and when you're on your phone, you're just seeing what other people are doing. Like your brain is connected to that and you're not even having that minute for yourself. So meditation really just helps me just listen, like just go inside and feel, how am I feeling? Like what emotion am I having right now? Why am I feeling this way? Just being more aware of myself, right? Because for you to be aware of things around, you got to start with yourself. And I, I, yeah. And... So meditation, I do it in the morning. Um, as soon as I wake up, I like to meditate, especially before going to work, because I want to get myself in that groove. And when I meditate, I set intentions. Um, so intentions are like how, what I intend for the day to go. So if I want my day to be a good day, when I'm meditating, I'm telling myself, today is going to be a good day. I am going to have a great day. And when you start off by just being positive, you know when you wake up in the morning and you're feeling good and your entire day is good? Yeah. But then you wake up in the morning and maybe you stub your toe or you did something and your entire day is like just messed yeah. up? Yeah, it's stuff like that that's like just like one, th- like being able to set that intention that you already know, okay, this is going to be a great day. Even if something goes wrong, maybe you're late to work, maybe whatever, you still have that, that is all right, today's going to be a great day. Mm. And with meditation, you know, there's this huge misconception that you have, your mind has to be still. That's damn near impossible for to, our minds to, to, to be, be still like yeah. that. So meditation's really knowing that, okay, you focus on your breaths. So you always want to start with like a deep breath. That's what helps me, right? I start with a deep breath. That way I'm just, I'm, and then I'm focusing like, okay, I'm inhaling and I'm exhaling. And it's super uncomfortable in the beginning because we're not used to that. Mm. We're not used to being just still. We're not just yeah. used to being quiet. So it's awkward. And then, I remember I told you one time that I will sit there and then my mind will wander and I'd be like, what am I about to eat? Or what? <laughs> I'm so hungry. You know, it always, always goes yeah. to food. But even when my mind goes there, I'm aware of it. I acknowledge that thought's going through. Mm. And then I go back and I'm just meditating again. Oh, okay. That's... I just be like, okay, that thought's going. And that's why in the beginning, I always recommend do a guided meditation. So you have someone's voice guiding mm-hmm. you, or at least you have the music to pay attention to. I like to meditate with singing bowls. So singing bowls are, did you see the picture of what I yeah, have? Yeah, yes. yeah. Those are singing bowls, or they're also called, um, well, their real name is like Tiberian, Tibe, Tiberian bowls. Don't, don't quote me. But I'm not. singing bowls is like the easiest way to remember them. Mm-hmm. And I just put those, and there's different singing bowls that play different hurts for different things. I don't know exactly on my mm-hmm. top of my head, but... um. And I would listen to that and just listen to myself. And then mm. I could be like, I'm feeling really sad. Why am I feeling sad? And sometimes, you know, as a uh, society, we like to think sad is bad and we try to push it to the, the back yeah. of our mind. We repress it a lot. But sad's just a normal feeling for us. So I would just sit there and be like, okay, I'm sad. Maybe I don't know why I'm sad, but I know I'm sad and I'm acknowledging it. I'm letting myself feel that way. And then usually when that happens, it's like it's gone. I'm like, I'm no longer sad. <laughs> wow. So you just yeah. like you just got to be aware, mm. aware of your thoughts, aware of your feelings, aware of things. It helped me to um, also um, be more aware of like how I respond to things, you know, because our emotions are not us. We have to divide that. Like those are their emotions, but that does not mean we are those emotions. I might be mad, but doesn't mean I'm a mad, like, always. Um, yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. So just being like, okay, why am I feeling, like I said before, why am I feeling that way? It just really helps me that mm. way. And just give myself a time to just not think about what's in front of me. I just more mm. relaxing. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I've, I've been trying to do that. <laughs> I don't down, I don't uh, download a head, head, headspace. headspace. I don't download um, a calm. You know, because my therapist turned me on a calm. And, yeah, calm's uh, great. Yeah, I just do yeah, plain I, old Spotify. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to clear something up from the last podcast. Mm-hmm. I think I said I don't. 
I don't care about my job. I said something to that effect. Uh, for those who heard it, I want to clear it up. I, what I meant to say is I don't, I don't, I care about my job, but I don't care about the stuff that I used to do about, because I used to take it upon myself to make sure the job is done. I'm not a manager. I'm not a supervisor. Yeah, I'm a regular it. employee. But always, and I can remember as far back as 10, 12, 13 years ago, that's how I, hell, even before when I was a supervisor on the night shift, I always wanted to do what was right so I could get certain people approval. Validation. Validation. I needed that validation. And I think one of the reasons why I had this couple of weeks that I was feeling pretty good about myself is I turned all that loose. I make sure my job is done, but I don't care about whether it gets done. All right. I, I do what I need to do mm -hmm. from 6 to 4 o'clock. In between now, you getting 100% of Tommy Grill. Yeah. But I'm not going out the way mm -hmm. to make sure that this is done when you got people in place to make sure right. that it's getting mm -hmm. done. So that's why I wanted to clarify about that. Yeah. I do care about my job. I don't, this is my 34th year. You, you don't stay someplace and don't care. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know it's a long time. And I still got, I'm trying to hit 40. <laughs> I, I, I want to hit 40 that I'm going to God spend my life in hell I will hit 40 but I just want to clarify that yeah. I'm leaving all my responsibilities is what I'm going to take care of I'm not taking care of else mm -hmm. or nobody else res responsibilities mm -hmm. I don't need nobody validation my length and time with RNDC mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is validation enough for me? Yeah. So that's I, I you know, I just wanted to, mm -hmm. I just wanted to clear clarify that if mm -hmm. whoever heard it, oh. you know, you know, I hate to be a butthead, but I really don't care. Well, yeah, you know, you're just but clarifying. but I, I'm just saying, you know, for <clears> those who heard it, oh, you don't care about a job. No, I just wanted to clarify that I do care. I just don't care about how I used mm -hmm. to do stuff in the past. Right. You know. I mean, it, it's very important because you just said it's based, it, you know it's because of validation. Yeah, I need validation. So, I, I, and, and not to cut you off, but that's something that's something my therapist told me a while back that I need validation. And she was, we were trying to sit down and figure out where it come from. And I, I don't know. I, 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 I need validation. Back, I, I, I need it. I don't know whether everybody else in the world okay. needs validation well, or not. Well, let me not, but cut you know. off real quick. A lot of us strive for valid, um But for different reasons? Yeah. Why can't that? The word just, like, escape my <laughs> brain real quick. Validation, right? And we see that a lot because of social media. We put pictures up because we want people to see it. True. We want people to like it. We won a certain amount of likes. If it does, I knew a person, I'm not going to put them on blast, but I saw this person once, put a picture on Instagram, and then I think it was up for like 30 minutes and decided, oh, I'm going to take this down and post it at a different time because not a lot of people see it because I didn't get enough likes. And I said, what? Like, see, things like that, and I... And I don't know if we can even pinpoint. I mean, sure, we could pinpoint where we want validation from. Maybe yeah. it's how we were like how we were raised. Like maybe one from our parents or blah, blah blah. But I know like, especially here in America, I don't know about other countries, but life is literally we're like programmed to want validation from people. We start off in school, and what we need validation from, from our teacher. Teachers, yeah. You know, then we get older and we still need validation for teachers because we're asking for recommendation letters to get yeah. into college. Then you get into college and you're looking for valid again. Yeah. Valid and just, then you get into a working workplace, place. Yeah. And guess what? You're looking for validation from your boss. Yeah. But you know? there, but there, but there has to be a cutoff point somewhere. Yeah, that, you just got to realize you, you, that you, you need. But see, I didn't. Mm. I needed validation because I, I, I guess I wanted to be accepted. Right. I, I wanted no, yeah, to be, yeah. you know, but. But it could be. 
like from yeah. the, I'm telling you anything because I searched for validation too, but different ways. Yeah. Like I didn't do it in social media because I think that's you know yeah. that's not yeah. me. Yeah. And were, Man, that's one of the things I. But I yeah. also seek validation from. I'm like mother. Yeah. She somebody asks for help. Even if she has a million and one things that she needed to do that day, she'll be like, "Oh, I can do it." Yeah. Even though, and that, and that, I'm, I'm sitting there listening. Oh, wow! Right, and I do the. God damn, you cooking? Why are you telling them you yes. gonna do this? You cook my food first. <laughs> you gonna do it. And I do that too. And mm. then you know, Joe was like, "You're putting a lot on your plate. Yeah. You're putting a lot on your plate." But like, I need to help them because yeah. I'm looking for if I can help you, and you're happy, that's on me. Yeah. That I'm, I'm worthy now. Yeah. I'm worthy, yeah. but. That's not true. No, nah, it's not. You got to, it's me. Yeah. Like, you not. have to find, and I, for me, I was been doing a little bit more digging, and meditation helps that, because I mm. like to meditate, like, sometimes when I meditate, too, I'll pick a topic, and I will, like, just sit on it, like, why am I feeling this way, and I mm. would just use that, Yeah, just stay with that topic. Right. <laughs> um, but it's, and I found out that I don't trust myself. Mm. That's wow. why I wow. need to get validation from other people to mm. make sure that I'm doing right, because mm. I don't trust myself myself to do it right wow. the first time yeah. so i'm telling you yeah. the, it, the work like to mm -hmm. look at it and you could pinpoint yeah. and see those things but sometimes it's not just like one reason, reason. there's yeah, like yeah. many many yeah. different ones all right well this uh about to call it quits because i know i don't went over 30 minutes we don't <laughs> went over 30 minutes but this is uh may is uh mental health month mm -hmm. uh if those who follow me on social media i will be posting stuff every day on mental health uh i i don't go on facebook i will post off instagram or twitter on the facebook mm -hmm. so i will be uh posting stuff that helps me get through my day-to-day -day yeah. life uh and i also want to say if y'all know anybody out there that's not right or even if yourself you don't feel right you don't something is not right or you don't have to have depression but you 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 mourning a loss or your job or covid or whatever the case might be there's so much people you could reach out to in the community mm -hmm. to uh have a conversation with uh you, know, you go to any pastor uh your grandmother anybody you know because as black people we need to Put our ego aside and and not judge if that person is not lived is not up to your expectations. Stop mm -hmm. judging. Yep. Stop judging. We we need to love more. And uh, it's all right. I was with. I went out there. I'm gonna call it quits in a few. But I went out last night and I saw some. I met some guys that I haven't seen in in a couple of years. And the first thing they came up gave me dap. And they, we hugged and stuff like that. And first thing came out their mouth, man, I love you. I had about mm -hmm. five guys told me that. I said, damn. It, I guess that's the norm now between black men and stuff like that. Because, hey, I, I've heard it, but it came from family members. You know, but to hear them guys telling me, hey, man, I, when I got ready to go, they said the same thing, so I said it back. Mm -hmm. Man, I love you. I, wow, I guess that's, this is, we progressing in that way. We putting our ego aside and telling each other that, hey, man, I love you. It's not, and, and to me, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It it, it don't mess with your, uh, your, your... Masculinity. Yeah, masculinity, mm -hmm. anything like that, but it's, it's cool, man, and then and, and it well, is, it, yeah. it's... I, he I hear it a lot just because of the community that I, you know, um, interact with the most, the mm -hmm. spiritual community. Yeah, spirit, yeah. yeah. They tell people they don't even know, like, on their thing, I love you, because yeah. we got to spread more love. Yeah, we have we to. Gotta spread uh, more we love. have to. But we I also to. wanted to say about the mental health, like, we got to do our part, even if you don't um, consider yourself. I mean, mental health, that's for everybody, whether yeah, you're yeah. Uh, diagnosed with anxiety, depression, or yeah, not. Like, yeah. mental health. So, you know, do do our part. We got to raise more awareness. Mm -hmm. We have to end the stigma. Yeah. Definitely on that's the mental the health. Thing. And then yeah. also take care of yourself, self-care. Give yourself time to just rest. Do nothing. Yeah. Like, take a day and do what makes you happy. Yeah. 
Because yeah, I'm telling that. you, that is a game changer yeah. when you start putting yourself yeah. first. One of the things I do, I, I binge watch uh, NCIS and New Orleans. <laughs> this is my self care. Yeah, this is my self care. <laughs> All right, people, uh, shout out to Shifted Vision Media. Love these guys. I, I know I said I said so much. Uh, people, yeah, 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 right. But nah, uh, love them guys, man. wasn't 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 for them. Guru Speak Podcast wasn't for him. I wouldn't have this platform. Wasn't for Shift Division Media. I wouldn't be here today talking about what we talk about with my oldest daughter. And I also say I don't want to forget about my youngest one because I know she already said she was. Uh, She's a little jealous that she yeah, wasn't here. Yeah, with a little us. jealous. So <laughs> once she come home, I'm gonna get all three of us and have a conversation. You know, I probably just have to walk off the set with her. But anyway, <laughs> uh, much love. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>